to Vero Beach. Why do people move here? Well, there are actually seven reasons we're going to explore in this video. And we're going to start with the weather. Kind of obvious, but even the weather here is special compared to other places in Florida. Because the interesting part about Vero Beach is we're officially classified as the start of the tropics. I'm not making that up. Google it. You can see it for yourself. Now, that fact has some real consequences when it comes to our weather here. Yes, it's warm in the summertime. You have like three and a half months here in the summertime where the average temperature will hover right around 90. And by the way, it's not the temperature that some people feel burdensome. It's the humidity. It is humid. But because we're on the northern edge of the tropics, it's actually less humid than if you would go further south. Let's call it Fort Lauderdale or Miami or Key West for that matter. On the other hand, because we're part of the tropics, if you go further up north in Florida, Melbourne, Daytona, and eventually end up in Jacksonville, uh, we don't have those cloudy, gloomy days like they have a tendency to have in the wintertime. And I used to live up there uh, near Jacksonville. So we don't have that at all. So in a in a way, we get the best out of both worlds. My name is Michael Keneal, and this channel is all about living and moving to Vero Beach and the surrounding areas up the coast, down the coast. And I would like to invite you to follow along. I'm also a licensed Florida realtor, and as much as I like making these videos, I would like even more to help you in your real estate needs. So in the description below, you find a couple of ways to get hold of me. Just reach out and we can chat more in detail. So in essence, you can kind of live outside for eight or nine months of the year. And that's actually a very freeing experience when you come from uh, a place where, where you have to hunker down half of the year just because of some climate events outside. And as I said, it's a very freeing experience. It's one of the things people always mention when they first get here. Uh, to give you a personal example, when I come home from the office or I have some stuff to do uh, in the afternoon, in the winter time where we are right now, I'll take my laptop, I go outside on the patio and uh, work and watch the palm trees swinging in the wind. Another big reason why our weather feels different is, obviously, if you look at the map, Vero Beach is very, very close. It is on the coast, which means I'm on the Atlantic, which means there's a constant wind or at least breeze going on. There are very, very few days here where, you, where it's calm, where you don't have that. Now, obviously, you can feel that the most when you're directly on the beach side of Vero Beach, but those wind uh, extend so surprisingly far away inland as well. I have a friend that actually used to grow up here and then for personal reason a couple of years ago he moved to South Carolina and like clockwork every summer he calls me and he says listen it feels so much hotter here than it has ever felt to me in Vero Beach. We have the same temperature in the summertime but because he doesn't get that ocean breeze it becomes kind of suffocating in the summertime up there. Reason number two, let's call it remote workers, remote workers opportunity. And that's something that almost didn't exist 10 years ago. So number one, we didn't simply have the technology uh, like we do now when it comes to communication, when it comes to the thing I'm talking in right now. And number two, maybe, maybe more important is uh, over the last two or three years during those pandemic years, People have gotten used to it, are way more comfortable uh, of using it. it. So it has now become an accepted form of work, communication, whatever you want to call it. In addition to that, the pandemic years I just mentioned, it was like a, it was like a shock to the whole society, right? For a long time, nobody really knew what was going on. But it also gave people time to, let's call it, reassess their priorities. And if you're in that kind of work that allows the remote work, um, a lot of people figured that, well, I need to put more priority on lifestyle. We're coming back to what I just mentioned with the weather, if nothing else. Um, you're not cooped up. Uh, you can live outside. There are all kinds of activities you can do down here that you probably don't have the opportunity to, opportunity to do up north, uh, at least not year round. We also have pretty easy access to airports. So if you still need to travel once in a while, um, West Palm Beach is like one and a half hours away. Orlando's two hours away. We have a local airport here that may serve as well. And, uh, and Melbourne is around 45 minutes to an hour away where you can connect to pretty much any place in the country. I do have a couple of clients that have to uh, show up in their offices uh, once or twice a month. So for them, that traveling is very much worth it compared to the 
again and lifestyle they're getting. Speaking about lifestyle, reason number three why people move here is we have beaches. We have 26 miles of them, pretty much uninterrupted. Now, well, that in itself is already pretty cool. Uh, they're not crowded. I mean, we have the Invero Beach, you have like three, I call them tourist collecting points. Uh, they're the most known access points to the beach. You have Saxon Plaza, you have JC Beach, and then you have Hammerson Plaza. But even there, if you go to the beach and you just take the effort and move 500 feet to the left or 500 feet to the right, you're still pretty much on your own. Uh, in addition to that, along the coast, you will find dozens and dozens of little parks, little, sometimes just little parking lots that have a walkway across the dunes to get to the beach. And you're definitely going to be there by yourself. Speaking about the beach, obviously, we have the Atlantic. And the Atlantic is completely different than the Gulf Coast side, the west side of Florida. Number one, the Atlantic is way more active. You have way more weather systems over in Europe and everything else that travel across the Atlantic. So, so you basically have constant wave actions. There are very, very few days where the Atlantic is flat. Most of the time you just have nice rolling waves coming in. But if the weather patterns are right, especially when a nor'easter is coming here, um, we have some big waves, sometimes six, seven, eight foot. It's a very active body of water. It's not like the Gulf Coast at all. Another feature of the Atlantic, which makes it very different than the Gulf, our sea bottom, so to speak, goes really deep, really quickly. Not like the Gulf Coast where you can, sometimes it feels like you can walk for a very long time and the water still goes up to your knees. So, so it drops down much quicker. One effect is that the, it's, the water is going to be warm in the summertime, but it's not going to be as warm as on the Gulf, simply because you have a deeper body of water that needs to heat up, plus you get the constant wave action. So it's not as warm as the water on the Gulf, but, but in the summertime, it still warms up to right around 70, 75 degrees. Maybe more importantly, and because of that topography, the deep drop off, uh, we can, during storm surges, which we have during storms, they can travel very far inland. It's not like having the slow ramping up like you have on the Gulf Coast. It kind of crashes on the beach, but there just isn't enough body of water to push it any further, which also is reflected in a flood zone map. And the fun part is if you have a house on the ocean, you're actually not in a flood zone. The only really vulnerable areas are actually in Vero Beach. We don't have a direct access from river to ocean. For that, you have to go either further up uh, to the Sebastian Inlet or to the Fort Pierce Inlet. So now when a weather system pushes the water towards the coast, the water really can only enter up north in the Sebastian Inlet or further south in the Fort Pierce Inlet. And then it doesn't really have anywhere to go. So the water level in between of the river rises. And to top it off, it is scientifically proven that living close to the beach is good for your health. Now, personally, my wife and I, we drive to the beach every morning. It's one of those things in Vero Beach. It's very easy to get around. You have very easy access to the beach. So we drive to the beach every morning to start the day, see the sunrise. Yeah, it's a good start. Reason number four, let's call it nature. And we have nature in abundance. The most obvious piece obviously here would be the Indian River, which is actually not a river. It's an estuary. There is a real distinction and some people are very picky about it. But for you and me, it looks like a river. So everybody calls it a river. Its claim to fame is that it's uh, North America's most biodiverse body of water. And that's actually really easy to verify for yourself. So if you're on the water in a small boat or on a kayak, you're virtually guaranteed to see dolphins, manatees, uh, once in a while, there's a shark, there's an alligator coming along, birds of prey, pelicans. It's teeming with wildlife. And the distinction between river and estuary actually becomes important when it comes to the fact what kind of boats you can actually uh, drive on the river here. It's actually very, very shallow. It's between four and six feet. So it adds to the whole atmosphere that you can't have any big yachts and everything else moving up and down here. Everything is more in the small fishing or pleasure boat category. And now if you have a boat here and you like to go into the ocean, like I mentioned before, we don't have a direct access to the ocean. So your choices are either heading up north to the Sebastian Inlet or heading further south to the Fort Pierce Inlet. It's almost the same distance. Most people will choose the uh, Fort Pierce Inlet. It's much easier to navigate. It's much less treacherous. Staying with the nature theme, if you go further up north, but you stay on the beach side, you will hit Pelican Island. Now, Pelican Island, it's famous in its own right. It is the first established 
wildlife refuge in America. There's actually a whole history about it. You can read up on it. Something to do with Teddy Roosevelt's daughter and her being disgusted about the fashion trend back then in New York, bird feathers and everything else. So it's the oldest one. And by now it's home to all kinds of water birds that are protected. And, but they have a visitor center so you can drive in there and then they have these platforms you can go up and you can watch them from afar. It's a very, very cool place. Reason number five, throwback. And you've heard me use that term if you watch my other videos over and over again. And it may be just a simple word, but it's the best word I can come up with to what Vero Beach really feels like. And I mentioned that before, uh, a lot of people will tell me that we feel like uh, Fort Lauderdale, Boca felt like in the 50s and 60s. Now for some people it's a good thing, some people aren't too thrilled about it. It all depends what you're looking for. So, but it's very obvious when you drive here. So number one, we don't allow or we don't have any kind of master plan communities, you know, like you have in Orlando, I think the villages further south, you have tradition, and then you have a couple of other ones the further south you go. And these are like artificial cities, hence the name plan community. And they're trying to create, depending which one you're looking at, and they're trying to create either inner city feeling or more around a country club, golf club atmosphere, around golf courses, etc. And the bigger ones, they're to the point where you almost don't have to leave. You have your own shops, your own grocery stores and everything else. So unless you have to go somewhere, you can literally stay there. Now, as I said, that's really appealing for some people and some people are really, really not that much into it. Those are the people that feel more comfortable in Vero Beach. Um, now the throwback feeling comes with a couple of consequences that, so we don't have all the amenities. It feels like a smaller town. So entertainment options, etc., are very, very limited here. So in that sense, Vero Beach is actually very polarizing. There is no in between. So either you like the big city feel, all the amenities, all the noise, the lights and everything else. I never had a client that had to think about it for very long. If he rather live in the typical South Florida atmosphere or Vero Beach, as I said, it's black and white. If you like that kind of lifestyle, we have a couple of cool party tricks up, up our sleeves. Uh, especially when you come from the beach, you go towards the mainland. We have these two bridges that connect the mainland to the beach. But if you come in the evening from the beach towards the mainland, basically looking west, because we don't have any high rises, as far as I can see, you see sunset. One last thing, staying with the throwback theme. We're a small city, but we're organically grown. Nothing is really planned or master planned. So what you ended up with after almost 100 years here, you have, as I said, small city, but hundreds of little neighborhoods. Some of them are similar, some are very different in feel from each other. Um, we have neighborhoods where you may have 25 or 30 homes. Everybody else on the West Coast is laughing right now because their small neighborhoods consist of 15 or 20,000 homes. It's a very different feeling. And in some places it feels a little bit like Mayberry. So in general, it's just a slower, more relaxed lifestyle. Let's move on to reason number six why people actually move here. And for that to fully understand, you have to realize that Vero Beach really consists of two parts. You have the mainland and then you have the beach side of Barrier Island. Now there's more to it than just being geographically separated. They also attract buyers price-wise for two very, very different reasons. On the mainland side, our real estate prices actually look affordable, especially when you compare it to further south and especially on the west coast. Uh, the Barrier Island has the distinction of having an average real estate price right now, a selling price of four times the national average in the United States. It's a very exclusive area. Now, don't get me wrong, it's a spectacular place to live. There aren't too many places left in Florida where you can live among two or three hundred year old oak trees that are just the canopy is just lining the streets. It's a very small area. It's impeccably kept, but it definitely has its price. There's definitely a status factor associated with it. Very much like in Palm Beach, the Isle down there, or if you go into other places further down in Miami, etc. Now compared to those places, the beach side here actually looks affordable but it's still three times the average home price you have on the mainland. So in a nutshell, two areas, mainland affordable, beachside expensive, and both attract their own clientele for exactly that reason. Now the good news is, and here's where the circle closes and everything comes together. So we talked about that we are a small town, that we have these two bridges that have really easy access uh, to and from the beach. Uh, we have 26 mile of beaches. So what happens is in effect, 
it doesn't matter where you live on the on the mainland side it takes you anywhere between 10 and 15 minutes to get to the beach side so you can enjoy all that without paying the beach prices and number seven of the reasons why people move here of course it's the retirement hey that's how we started out it is a retirement it's a retirement place and the the progression always seems to be the same when you talk to somebody at one point when they were kids uh, they either visited their parents or grandparents here on vacation and then eventually we graduated to either a vacation rental here or a seasonal place and then we make the move to retirement now over the last couple of years there's a new wrinkle that has emerged toward that path and that is well let me explain it on an example I had a guy that called me a couple of years ago and he said listen I can't retire yet I can't afford to retire but I also know when I'm able to retire in five or seven years I probably can't afford the prices anymore so now what we ended up doing he bought a place here now he can't move in yet full time it's basically securing your place in the sun at the current prices so what we're doing is we're renting it out seasonally which is super easy it's a really really desirable spot some places are really booked out for years at a time especially on the beach side so we're not doing it to to offset all the carrying costs they're obviously there it's a calculated risk he's taking but it certainly helps and uh, once he moves down here uh, money-wise it will have paid off coming up